Good day and welcome to the ADM Agriculture YouTube channel. My name is Nico Papworth and this is the ADM UK Fertiliser Market Overview. Really looking at the market since our last YouTube video. I'm conscious this may be a slightly longer video, so we're going to put some timestamps in there. So if you want to jump forward to a particular section, then that functionality will be available to you. Let's look at the market as an overview, really, since we last spoke. The European fertiliser market continues to face some pretty notable challenges. I think as we're seeing natural gas prices exceeding that 48 euro per megawatt hour level, which is the highest level since NOV 23, UK urea imports have also been down 30% year on year to September 24, which has left a significant nourishing demand unmet as the application window is beginning to loom. A lot of that is really down to farmer appetite more than anything else. And I think it's a bit of a challenge for some of the importers to try and negotiate that. Um, some rising gas costs, a weaker pound and, and generally a lack of clarity, I think, surrounding UK demand following a, a pretty challenging establishment window for, for many of the growers in the UK over the last month has been the story behind that. Uh, while urea prices generally have been supported globally in, in recent weeks by the, the previous two Indian tenders, I think this UK demand story about has been, been pretty muted. Uh, Potash prices stayed pretty stable. Um, spring application demand is expected to rise into December, uh, while phosphates generally are facing affordability issues globally, but generally being counterbalanced by quite a tight global supply. Yara's recent plant closure in Belgium signals further risks to European production amid persistent cost pressures and, and some decarbonisation mandates. Let's look a little bit deeper now and, and, and look at natural gas as a whole. As I mentioned, European nat gas futures have climbed well above that 48 euro per megawatt hour level, which is exceeding that quite elusive knob 23 high, um, which has raised some quite severe concerns, I feel, mostly for the European fertiliser producers more than anything else. Previously, when we saw gas at these levels, UKAN was around £375 a tonne on farm. As you can see by this graph, this surge in gas price generally is reflecting expectations of some heightened winter demand and some general concerns over potential supply disruptions. A looming Arctic air mass is forecast to bring some widespread snowfall, severe winter storms and below average temperatures across the whole of Europe, driving up the need for heating and, and general electricity generation. Geopolitical risks are further amplifying this market uncertainty. Ukraine has announced it will not renegotiate the gas transit deal with Russia, which is set to expire at the end of the year on December 31st, which has raised some fears over supply disruptions in the coming months. Despite this, Russian gas exports to Europe via Ukraine remain stable as of Wednesday this week, even as Gazprom pledged to cut supplies to Austria over a contractual dispute. In response to higher European prices, at least five shipments of LNG have been redirected from Asia across to Europe. These redirections highlight the region's growing reliance on LNG imports, generally to, to offset these pipeline shortages. European gas reserves, which began the withdrawal on November the 3rd, have now fallen below 91% level capacity, which is generally underlining the increasing draw on storage as colder temperatures begin to set in. The market continues to monitor this balance between steady LNG arrivals and geopolitical risks as winter demand begins to intensify. Right, let's look at urea now. Since our last video, where we were talking about RCF securing a tender for India, they didn't actually manage to secure anything like what they were hoping to achieve only secured around 560,000 tonnes. This tender was on October the 4th, and only 50,000 of that was for the West Coast. Generally, this is due to quite notable price disparities between the two coasts. This shortfall then prompted IPL, Indian Potash Limited for India, to return to the market with a tender which closed on November the 11th, requesting a million tonnes of urea just for the West Coast to be delivered by December 25th. IPL has since issued letters of intent for just over a million tonnes under this tender. In the UK, Urea imports and market dynamics remain quite subdued. We've seen a little flurry of recent weeks in terms of paper trading for granted urea at sort of 380 to 400 dollars a ton SIF bulk levels, um, but no imported buyers are really present in the market as of NOV 20. But I feel that is something which is coming up now. Retail price for urea stands sort of 360 to 370 bag delivered, but buyer interest is still quite thin as we speak today. In comparison, AN 34 and a half remains priced just under that 340 level bag delivered, highlighting the subdued state of the UK nitrogen market. According to the latest data, UK urea imports from Jan through September 2024 totaled just over 660,000, which is down 10% compared to the same period in 2023. Looking specifically at the fertilizer year, 
terms of import, which we consider sort of July through September, imports actually fell 30% year on year, totaling just over 242,000 tonnes. September 2024 imports alone were 97,000, which declined, which generally reflects overall quite weak demand. With AN deliveries also reported to be lower than last year, significant catch-up will be needed to address the significant volume of UK growers still left to cover their requirements. Looking ahead, India is expected to tender again mid to late December, with shipments anticipated for Q125. This is generally to restock for the rabbi season. This activity can provide a little bit of support to the global urea market, which I think has struggled with weak demand despite some of these tenders and a little bit of excess supply. Meanwhile, meanwhile, eyes remain on China, where export restrictions have created a domestic oversupply of 1.4 million tonnes. These, these restrictions are expected to ease by Q225, which potentially adds some downward pressure to global markets. Let's look at this cable graph here, um, GBP USD. Uh, pound against the dollar, we're looking at high 1.25 levels this morning, which I think is continuing to pound some of these import challenges for urea. Since 2020, September 24, the currency's declined from around 134 levels, effectively has increased costs by £16.60 a tonne, which has raised quite a lot of the global bearish price action we've seen since the original RCF tender on October the 4th. Importers need to carefully balance grower requirements for Q125 with this quite adverse currency environment and limited spot demand. Let's take a look at ammonia now. The spot market ammonia has remained quite quiet this week. Um, and certainly since we last spoke, um, current CFR values have generally deterred a lot of buyer interest. Algerian FOB prices are in that $570 a tonne range, and Egyptian tonnes are reportedly transacting between $550 and $560 a tonne FOB. European buyers, based on this, would probably be facing offers around $620. However, quite poor downstream margins, which we'll talk about in a minute, and, and some rising raw material costs are keeping buy side economics firmly quite in the negative territory. This has been highlighted most clearly by LAT's recent withdrawal from the German market, citing the strain of this exact issue, rising natural gas costs. In the UK, 15,000 tonnes of Turkish spot ammonia arrived in Teesside on November the 7th. This shipment was priced at a level which would require some upwards adjustment in domestic market prices to really cover costs and, and meet margin aspirations. Limited appetite amongst buyers, coupled with important needs to hit port throughput agreements, has capped the scale of any price increases we've seen for now. LAT's withdrawal, I think, highlights some broader concerns about the future of the European nitrogen production. The UK being a heavily AN-driven market, which is quite unique, differing from other, other substantial fertiliser importing nations, which, of course, we are not. Um, rising that gas cost are, are generally sparking some conversations about the long-term viability of many of these production plants. The European nitrogen industry has faced some quite significant turbulence since the 2021 natural gas price surge and the geopolitical fallout from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. While operations have recovered from the widespread shutdowns we saw in August 22, producers remain quite exposed to volatile gas markets, scattered demand, and tightening decarbonisation policies. The closure of Yara's 400,000 tonne ammonia plant in Tertra, Belgium, two weeks ago, underscores the risks to European production policy initiatives, such as the ETS, the European Emissions Trading Scheme, the Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, CBAM, and RED3, are generally adding to these cost burdens. These policies will require a significant shift for these producers towards low emissions ammonia, presenting some quite high cost hurdles for many of these operators. Despite reduced gas price volatility since 2021, the average production cost for ammonia remains significantly elevated, keeping utilisation rates at about 75% across Europe. Plants which we would categorise as high risk, which is those with high production costs and limited operational consistency, continue to face significant challenges, while medium risk plants, which represent around 6.9 million tonnes of European production capacity, are increasingly now vulnerable too. Producers with the infrastructure to import ammonia, such as Yara, Group Rizzotti, OCI, are adapting by scaling back domestic production and prior prioritising imports to meet downstream demand. The structural shift which we've seen towards low carbon ammonia will require substantial investment in import infrastructure and green hydrogen production. Policies such as the RED3 mandate, 40, which says 45% of hydrogen used in end products needs to be green by 2030, which rises to 60% by 2035. Estimations suggest that approximately 40% of European ammonia and urea producers may need to shut down to meet these targets, further increasing Europe's reliance on imported nitrogen products. To take a little bit of a softer topic now, um, let's look at some potash. 
Global MOP spot price, the forecast to remain pretty stable through the end of 24, potentially with an uptick in demand in Q125, really due to seasonal demand and, and, and some favorable affordability. Price has held pretty steady outside of China this week, despite Belarusian President Lukashenko's proposal for 10 to 11% production cost in collaboration with Russia, which has sparked some market speculation. However, a lot of market participants remain quite skeptical about this actually being implemented. Meanwhile, Canada's West Coast port strikes, which have been ongoing since November 4th, are being monitored, but have so far caused pretty minimal disruption to the potash supply. In Northwestern Europe, the MOP market remains seasonally slow. Prices are around 300 to 330 euros a tonne SIF for standard and 330 to 350 for the granular materials. The product continues to be purchased on a piecemeal basis. The buyers are generally taking a pretty cautious approach. However, demand is expected to begin increasing in early December as preparations for the spring application season begin to ramp up with a more significant improvement anticipated at Q125. In the UK, what limited products being purchased is changing hands at this 320 to 325, highest 330 levels. In Southern Europe, buying interest has begun to pick up, actually reflecting the region's earlier seasonal demand ahead of this spring application period. And finally, just to, to briefly run over phosphates, DAP spot price have held mostly steady this week. Tight availability is, is the general cause for this, despite some continued downward pressure from, from poor affordability and, and limited seasonal demand from notable key DOP markets. Recent declines over the past three weeks broke a five-month upward trend, which saw prices rise by 26% from May to early October. In the UK, phosphate demand remains fairly subdued, which I think reflects really more broader market conditions uh, in the domestic fertilizer sector. This muted interest is, is aligning really with general demand globally, like although key import destinations, Ethiopia, Bangladesh, have provided some relief to these suppliers. Ethiopia's decision recently to switch from NPS to DAP added another million tons of demand to this market, while Bangladesh, which secured an additional volumes two weeks ago, closed another tender on 200, uh, for around 200,000 tons on November the 18th. Meanwhile, availability remains limited for many key origins. China, constrained by export quotas, has little to no products available for international markets, differing significantly from their urea position contributing to their tight supply conditions and providing a degree of support to prices in some regions. Thank you for joining me on this somewhat brief walk through the market since our last YouTube video. Have a great week's trading. Thank you.